I, I like to say or think when, when people say that, I say, wow, you've been in church all your life and you're still as mean as you are? Mm-hmm. My goodness. Seems like people would change. Yeah. My goodness. Listen, I want to talk about the church for a minute. And, and, and I want to ask the tough questions of how would you say where well, the church could have been in position, where well, the church could have been a, a, a moving force in your life. Yes. Um, I, want you, I want you to tell how the church missed it with you, uh, how the church turned you off. Uh, the, some of the things that happen yeah. in church to where the church didn't give you what you were looking for, that that, that family, that body of believers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the ones that uh, sh- should be into the Lord, Amen. worshiping, Amen. should exactly. be able to recognize men coming in, women coming in being hurt. I need you to talk, and we're not, of course, I'm a pastor, I love the church, church is my life, mm-hmm. okay? So, the, the, but the truth of the matter is, is I think there's too many taboo subjects Amen. in the church to where people Amen. are dying, Amen. their brother's still out there, and the only thing that we do, we go preach, uh, we close the doors, we go to a golden corral or wherever we want to go eat, yeah. and then that's it until Wednesday or something, and people are dying, and I want to know how, because as a, as a new church here, Brother George, I want to be effective as a pastor. Amen. I, I, I want to be effective as a man of God and the things I say, I want you to help me, man. Amen. Help me, uh, help me and help those that are, are watching, help us and how to revolutionize, uh, how to revolutionize. I'm sorry. I keep twisting that no, up. Okay. Uh, 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 brothers, sisters and the community and things like that. Talk Amen. to me, man. Talk to me. Well, what people would have to do. Let me start with the negativity in the church. Uh, the main thing that I feel like uh, I use uh, when I talk about my turn off with church is it became more of a, like the devil's runway, I should say, because... The devil's runway? Yeah, more, more people were focused on, on retail, goodness. and they were focused on what these this girl is wearing, and her heels aren't aren't Christian Louboutin or whatever whatever these women are wearing, because I don't keep up with you know fashions and things anymore. But it's just it became to a point where I couldn't go into church as I am, because oh, people had their own gangs and cliques, you know, they had their own... You tell me there's cliques in the church? Come on, man. It's too many. It's too many. I've seen my parents get shut out of meetings they should be in, meetings they should be running. I've seen them get, you know, you know, disqualified from positions that they could have and excel in, all because someone has aggression towards them for a petty reason, a reason outside of the church that has nothing to do with the person that has the grudge anyway. You know, and it aggravated me to a point where every time that we ended up becoming a, a, a home or a part of a church family, that it was people who would forcefully push us out because they didn't want to see the anointing there. And I knew that's what it was. Sometimes my parents would even be like, oh, you know what, you stay home because you're going to be the guy that just walks up and says it. Like, you're going to be the guy that just goes up. Because I really don't like, you know, when it comes to our families, as a growing black man, it's, it's hard to see somebody just disrespect them like that and not say nothing, especially in a setting where God should be first. Come on. Because I feel like when you're paying attention to somebody and what they're wearing and how they're walking and where they came from, oh, he smells like Pete. Well, maybe because he's homeless. Maybe because he hasn't had anywhere to go for the last 10 years. Wow. You know, and for us to revolutionize that, we have to get in them trenches that all these, you know, know, powerful and financially superpowers, you know, excuse me, financial superpowers of churches don't want to go. You know, they don't want to go to the very back streets in these neighborhoods that they're scared of. They don't want to talk to these kids on these corners they think are selling drugs. They don't want to be around the kids at the after-school parking lot because they think they're doing something wrong. And that's all an assumption. It's the same thing they did to Christ. You assume he's coming here to change everything and ruin your reign when all he's trying to do is bless you with some very pertinent My, information. You preaching, man. You know, and that's always what got me. And it's just after a while, I just couldn't hear it. Come you know, until back, and it's been all the way from I was a young teen to me meeting you. Wow. And that, 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 that's, that's got to be, you know, nine, ten plus years in my past. I haven't been and sat down and been comfortable in church till now. You ha- wait, wait, wait a minute. I've got to stop. You said you, you have not been comfortable in ch- so you you so you're saying basically you just got an attitude to say you know what I'm done with this because I've been so have you been church hurt yes completely and totally uh, I'm not gonna give any names any locations but in the last situation that me and my family went through with the church it, it, it truly devastated me it truly made me feel like that it was the devil's runway that he is using nothing but these people that are supposed to be our family to destroy us. 
You know, it, it, he's using these people who we give, we give, we give our time, we give our efforts, we give our finances, we give our love, we give our pain. We let you know the deepest sentiments that we have inside of us. Oh, and you take it and use it as, uh, let me see, as, as torture pretty much. Torture. You're going around everybody else, you know, sister so and so is going to deacon such and such and telling this and that to all the congregation. And then you come back in, everybody's pointing, looking and judging and talking about you. You know, if you're going to go into church to judge somebody, I suggest that you don't go. Because as you're judging somebody, just think about it. Remember when your grandparents always say, when you point your finger, it's always three pointing back at you. And God is always judging you, especially when you're judging someone in church. He's judging you off the simple fact we're supposed to be here to love and to construct and to build on these yes. young people, not tell them that they are drug dealers. There's no such thing as that to me. You know, that's only a label. You do what you have to do when the time arises. I understand that about every man now me growing into being one. You know, and a father and a husband. I understand I understand now that being a man is, is making the decisions that no one else can make. Yeah. It's hard just to make a move and do something for your family that might construct it. But then also in the dark, it's a 50-50 shot. Just like with me, that's how I felt church had become. Wow. Like I, I could go to this church and I could, I, could, I could feel comfortable with these new people that I don't know. You know, or... or I could I could stay home and just be in my little bubble in my shell and just forget about it and just pray on my own and do my own service here. You know, so after a while I got tired of that and that's when my parents, you know, eventually introduced me to you. And I was like, I actually feel comfortable around it. You know, this guy and these people, they actually make me feel like it's a home. Like no one's coming in there to talk about what I got on and why you got your scrubs on today. Cause I just came from work. I don't have any, you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't have time to go home and change. You know, or they're not getting on the woman coming in, scratching her neck because she's beating an addiction. You know, these are the people that I want to reach. These are the people that need to be talked to. Right. To let them still know that you're still a person. Yeah. God still counts you. Regardless if the census doesn't, the neighborhood watch, I don't know, the homeowners association, if they don't count you as a person, God still counts you all as people. Everybody. It doesn't matter what you do, who you are, what you believe you are. Because, you know, there's a lot of things of orientation with people nowadays. You know, they want to identify themselves as this and that yeah. and this and that. And you're the same thing that you came right. to God. Right. It's never going to change. Yeah. No matter what you wanted to be and say you are, you will always be the same thing that you started as to him. So. Man, that, man, so you, so you, you just came to, so the, the, these, these rags, so I would be considered, now both of us walked in the church, there, there's a, is there a possibility I would be escorted to the front, and they, they say, sir, you, um, you sit wherever? Yes, yeah, see, the thing is, on, what I believe, I, it, for, to, for me, it was always broken down in sections, because I'm very observant uh, of people, seating arrangements, I always walk in and yeah. view everything. So as I would come into these churches, you know, where I experienced my church hurt, right. I would see, you know, the higher class suit and tie guys up at the front, you know, very front, or even in the pulpit sometimes, even up uh, up under the pulpit, like right there, you know, they all had the, like, seats, like the Senate, you know, they all had their good little seats. Then you get to the middle class, and those guys are sitting in the middle, you know, polos and maybe some khakis, you know, then you get to the back and the guys have on the jeans. Mm -hmm. Then the very back is like the people who can't even afford, they, they don't even have a place to stay. They walked here, you know what I'm saying? They wow. came for miles and miles just to hear this. And, you know, they would escort the guys, like you said, in suits. Like, me and you go in and they don't know we tight. You know, they right. Oh, yeah, sir, you can sit anywhere. Sir, you come up here with me. And then wow. knowing you, you're like, right, hey, hold on, man. Like, I, I can't. We came here. That's right. What you doing? That's right. Like, you know, and, and that's what got me. That's yeah. what gave me that church hurt. You know, and but now I've right. opened back up, thanks to you you and God, you know, I've opened back up to Praise the God. option of it happening, you know. So that's just my stance on it. Well, man, I, I'm telling you, I'm I'm so thankful and, and grateful that uh, you are, are have been as candid as you are. Um, I believe that your testimony and your experience, uh, like the scripture says, Amen. that uh, they overcame by the words, Amen. their testimony, they and did, they loved they not even their own lives out of revelation. Um, I'm thankful. I am, I'm so grateful because I believe that in this in this generation that God is raising up a people uh, that's unafraid, unashamed, and unapologetic. Amen. And I want you to know that's the type of people that I, I I'm believing God is going to connect me with. Amen. I'm I'm not with the elitists. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm not I'm not with that. Take Amen. me down to the trenches. Amen. Take me, uh, give get me, I want to be down, down in uh, in the trenches, man, to where people have been forgotten about yes. um, and where people feel like there is no love Amen. and there is no hope. And as we are beginning to uh, uh, raise up the church uh, here in Charlotte, 
I, I, I'm believing God that God is going to expand and enlarge uh, my territory. Amen. Uh, and, and guess what? I need you on that team, man. Amen. Because we have people to reach. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to get out of here, but I want uh, you, you're, you're currently doing an album. Yeah, I actually. Cutting an album. Yeah, if you can yeah. give me just a snippet of information, tell people uh -huh. again your name. Uh -huh. Will there be able to find your information? Okay. And... Uh, my name is uh, George Hester, but uh, my stage name or my, my moniker is Matt Killer, and it stands for Machine Against Corruption, Killing Ignorance and Leaving Love Always. And my first CD is called the Matt Killer, Be Killer Valley, excuse me, the Matt Killer Valley EP. It should be in stores June 25th. Not in stores, but you can find it on ReverbNation.com, TuneCore.com, you know, SoundCloud. I have it on Facebook. I have it on Twitter. I'm just going to stream it. You know, and if you see me around, ask me about it. I'm, I'm willing to talk to anyone, you know, and give them information about what I'm doing. I'm going to be dropping maybe two singles here in the next month. So, you know, all glory be to God. And that's all I can really say about that. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, I want to thank you, man. Thank I want to thank, thank you. you. I know, man, you've got to get out of here, man. You're a working man now, <laughs> doing it the right way, the yeah, legal way. Yeah, I'm excited exactly. about that. <laughs> Listen, I'm Pastor Harold Timberlake here. Uh, in Charlotte. I'm excited to be here. I want you to come and see us. We're trying to change see, things. Amen. It's a church without walls. I don't care nothing about a building. I care about the souls amen. of people. I want you to look us up on our website at uh, www.goodshepherdchurchcharlotte.org. I want you to get our mobile app. You can find that on any Play Store, uh, iPhone, uh, Android, uh, wherever you get your apps from at Good Shepherd Church of Charlotte. Good Shepherd Church of Charlotte. I want you to follow us with the app and get on our prayer line. Come visit us. Come visit us. We are trying to do some new things here in the city of Charlotte. Give us a call. Give us a call at 704-729-4570. Again, I'm Pastor Harold Timberlake. I look forward to seeing you and serving you real soon. Join us every Monday night at 10 o'clock p.m. God bless you and good night.